All right, we are going to begin painting our clay projects um, as realistic as you can. So this was an, an example of a banana that a student left for me to show. Uh, so when you paint your clay project, you want to be painting as realistically as you can. So my best advice is that you look at the photograph you printed for this project to try to match similar colors and textures as you go about painting. So, um, when we paint, we always work on top of our project board with a piece of wax paper on the surface. And the reason is because when you are painting your clay project at cleanup time, when you have to go move your project, if this paint is wet and you pick it up, you're going to leave fingerprints in the wet paint. So, we put a piece of wax paper down on top of a wooden board. The wax paper acts like a tablecloth so the paint stays off of the board um, and it's easier to transport without touching the clay. But be careful because the wax paper is kind of slick so if you move too quickly your project could fall off the board and break. Um, and remember that 20 points come from how neatly you paint this project. So be careful with things. If something does break though, try to find the pieces and save the pieces. I can glue things back together. All right, so you're going to be using a styrofoam plate for your paint palette, and you should have your name written on the back so we know whose plate is who, and you are keeping this plate until your entire project is done being painted. So you're reusing the plate. Do not throw it away at the end of the period. All right, at your tables, you will see there are two different trays with an egg carton of paint on them. Um, so at the start of each period, uh, you're going to be taking the popsicle sticks that are on this tray and you're going to be setting them inside each color. So you'll open up the lid and um, the first time you paint, these will be brand new. So um, just stick one stick inside each color. But if this is not the first class you're painting, then these sticks are going to have dried paint on the end of them and you're just going to reuse the stick and it looks like I need one more. Uh, you're just going to reuse the stick and try to match it to the same color that was dried on the end. So I prefer that you put the popsicle sticks in at an angle at the side so that the sticks are all leaning away from the paint because when this happens and all the sticks meet in the middle it's hard to figure out which stick belongs to which color so that's why I just say lean them back to the outside edge and it's easier to figure out what stick belongs to what color so when you are ready to get your paint Again, you want to look at the photograph that you're trying to reference for the item that you're painting. And here is how we get paint out of these trays. You are going to use that popsicle stick to scoop out paint colors onto your plate. So if I know that I need white, I'm going to take the white paint out and I'm just going to scoop the white onto my plate and then my white popsicle stick immediately goes back into the white color so another student can use it. Uh, so I'm going to paint something that looks like a sugar cookie and maybe um, I'm going to have some different colored designs on the surface. So I'm going to scoop a little bit of pink and maybe a little bit of yellow and some green. Um, so if you know that you need to mix the color to make it lighter or darker, what you're going to want to do is um, get a little bit, if you're going to darken something, put a little bit of black on the paint plate. And I'm going to get some white paint if I'm going to lighten it. And um, maybe I'm going to work with some browns and put brown on its own spot. All right, so if I need to do any color mixing, the way that I go about mixing, I'm going to take a paintbrush. And you're going to see you have a tray of paintbrushes um, to pick from. But if I need to mix a color, I am going to use the end of my paintbrush to do the color mixing. So if I know that I want to make a light brown color, like a tan color, um, when you mix colors you always want to put the darker color into the lighter color. It mixes faster and it takes less paint to change it. So I'm going to take a little bit of brown on the end of my paintbrush handle and I'm just going to start mixing it into that white. And if I decide it needs to go darker, then I'm just going to add more brown little bits at a time. 
then you've got a pile of paper towels at your table. Those are used to clean off your brushes as needed. Okay. And if I wanted to make a dark brown, I would do the same process. I'm going to put the dark color into the lighter color. So black is going to be darker than the brown, so I'm going to scoop a tiny bit of black. You don't need a lot of black to change a color. Um, black affects the color very quickly, so small amounts in the beginning, because you can always add more as you need to. All right. Um, then same thing if I was wanting to mix... Um, the yellow and the green. If I want to make a yellow green, I would put a little bit of the dark into the light to start to change those colors. So maybe I want to make a little bit of a lime green. And maybe I want a little bit of a light pink, so I'm going to put some pink into the white, since the pink is darker than the white. So if you notice, each color got its own spot on the plate. I did not contaminate my popsicle sticks in the process. So um, contaminating means that you are putting one color on top of another color directly in the paint tray. Please do not contaminate the paint so that the whole table has a pure color to work with. So instead of putting the white on top of the pink, I had the white next to the pink on the plate. So I didn't contaminate that stick as I wiped it across the top. But sometimes that accidentally happens where things get contaminated. So if I accidentally put one stick in another color and then realize, oh my gosh, that belongs in a different spot, here's how we fix that problem. First thing you're going to do is pull out the popsicle stick that's contaminated and you're just going to wipe that off with a paper towel. I'm getting all that blue off of the green stick. Then the green stick can go back in the green. Then what I need to do is scoop off the contaminated color. So I'm just going to kind of wipe off the edge of that and I'm going to scoop under the green where the contamination was and just wipe that off either on a plate if somebody can use it or on a paper towel. So that the contaminated color is no longer on the surface and it's cleaned off. So you can um, I see a little more blue on there. You can clean out your own colors if you see they got contaminated. Just scoop the top layer off to get the color out that doesn't belong. Um, so then when you are ready to start painting, um, your priority is the top surface and any of the side edges that are seen. Um, you can paint the bottom, but the bottom is the edge it sits on, so save that for last. So you can see this banana was painted on every surface, but focus on the front just in case you run out of time. Um, so some tricks to painting. I would always clean your paintbrush to begin with. So you're going to have Tupperwares at your table with a giant sponge floating inside. When you fill it with water, please just fill it about an inch of water. Their water should not be as high as the sponge. About half of the sponge should be sitting in water. So I would always clean your brush first. Swish it around then wipe it off on the sponge because you don't want to trust that the student before you actually clean that well enough before you start painting. So I always like to have water on my paintbrush before I start. It's just going to allow the paints to um, spread themselves around a little bit easier. Um, and then again, I would look at your photograph as you start to paint um, so that things are as realistic as you can. But this is just a sugar cookie, so I can just kind of make it whatever I want. Um, so some things about painting. When you paint, you should always paint in brush strokes where I'm laying the brush down on the surface and I'm pulling away to start to spread that paint. Um, that's going to get you a neater look and feel things more solid. Uh, I too often see students that push the brush straight down and just smash the bristles and try to paint with the very end of the paintbrush by the silver piece. That is not the best way to go about painting. That is going to take you so much longer and it's going to start to change the shape of the paintbrush and it's going to start to ruin my paintbrush so it's no longer um, laying straight on the end. So please do not smash the brush to paint. Um, 
but I'm just going to kind of lay the brush down on its side and pull the brush to use the very top of the bristles to start to paint with. You can pick things up to paint them or if it's easier set it on the board and just leave it on the board to paint. Doesn't matter to me how you go about doing this. Um, but sometimes you need to let that paint dry before you go on to add details. Um, so maybe I want this to fade from like bright pink into light pink. So if you want to get colors to mix, the best way to do that is when the paints are wet because then they'll start to blend into each other easier. So I've got dark pink that's wet. I'm going to put some light pink next to it. I'm going to paint light pink in its own spot. And then I'm going to start to brush the colors into each other. If the paint is wet, they will mix where they overlap. And I could go back to put more pink, dark pink down. So now they start to fade. And then maybe I want the light pink to fade into white. So now I'm really going to clean my brush because I don't want any pink on there. And then I'm going to get just my plain white and start to paint the plain white towards the pink. So this is how you can get colors to fade into each other. It doesn't matter what the colors are. Paint them kind of away from each other and then towards each other. And if the paint's wet, when they crisscross, they overlap. So if I needed to do um, details on top of this, sometimes I have to wait for the paint to dry before I can do the details next class. Um, otherwise, the paints are going to mix. Uh, but I would want to paint the edges of this piece as I go. So um, I can help you mix colors as you need help, but what I'm checking for when I grade this is that you thoroughly covered the clay surface. Um, there should not be the regular clay surface still showing. Even if you want a light color, you still need to paint it to kind of seal that clay surface. Um, and then I'm looking at craftsmanship. How neat did you go about painting? Um, does it look like you've matched colors and textures from your food item and how well did you go about painting that surface being neat and taking your time. Okay, the great thing about the acrylic paint that we're using is that when it dries it is permanent. So this has now dried and you can see it's not coming off on my hands. So that's how we know it's dry. Um, but when acrylic paint dries, it becomes permanent so that you, if you don't like what you painted last class, you can just paint over the top and change the colors entirely. Uh, so if I decide I don't like the pink and I want this to become orange instead, no big deal. I'm just going to paint over the top once it's dry. Um, but it has to be dry to change colors. Otherwise, wet colors mix and uh, create new colors. So you can see that this orange can just paint right over the top of what once was there because it was dry underneath. Um, so when you are done for the class period, when the cleanup timer rings, you are going to go move this project to your shelf. Remember that um, just pick up the board, be careful, and then just go move that to your assigned shelf. Then you need to come back to your table to finish cleaning up the rest of the supplies. All right, once you have moved your project to your um, class shelf using that board to transport your clay piece on, then you need to decide what you need to do with your paint. Remember, we do not throw the plate away. We keep the plate until we're finished with the project. Um, so if you have a thick amount of paint, like that's a real thick amount of paint, you can try and save that and reuse it again. Um, but if your paint is not thick enough, it's not going to save. So if all you have is like really thin paint, like this example, if that's all I had left on my plate, that's not going to save. Um, that's just going to dry out and you're not really going to be able to use that next class. So if you have thick paint that you can save, what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of tin foil. You're going to set the tin foil over the top, fold it under, 
and then you're going to go place this with your clay project on your shelf so that you can reuse that paint and that plate next class. However, if you don't have enough paint to save or if you're done using those paint colors, you are still keeping the plate. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper towel and you're going to wipe the paint off the plate. So it's going to kind of look like that. Then you're going to go throw this paper towel away in the trash can. And the plate is going to be put on your shelf with your clay piece. This will dry overnight. And the next class when you take it out, this will all be dry. And you can put brand new paint on top of it. And it will not mix with the dry paint. So save those plates with those projects. Then as a class, um, at each table, you also need to clean up your tables. Um, so what you have to do is take these popsicle sticks out. Wipe the popsicle stick off so the extra paint is in the carton and then you're going to set these popsicle sticks on the side edge of the tray. Please do not let the sticks touch each other because then they dry together and then I can't separate them to reuse them again but we should be able to reuse these popsicle sticks um, again and again until the project is over. So I'm just spreading them out, setting them on the edge. Then when I'm all done, all the popsicle sticks are removed, you're going to close your egg carton so that the paint's not drying out. Um, then if uh, you check that your paint brushes are clean and make sure that you clean those paint brushes with your water tub at your table. So again, I'm going to switch that around, paint it on the sponge to test to see that your paintbrush is clean. When you think it's clean, number one, visibly you shouldn't see paint on it, but check it on your hand real quick. If you brush this on your hand and paint appears, then it really is not clean yet. So uh, switch it around again, paint on the sponge a little bit more, then test it. That truly is a clean paintbrush. So then just go wipe your hands off, clean those at the sink, but um, I do a check at each table. I will not dismiss your table until I see that all your paint brushes are cleaned off. I'm literally going to pick up the whole pile and I'm going to do a test on my hand. If no paint comes off on my hand, then your table cleaned up correctly. Um, egg carton should be shut with popsicle sticks on the edge and then I need you to empty out your water containers at the back sink um, and then raise your hand and I will dismiss you by tables to start washing up and getting ready for dismissal.